Robin Hood, Chapter 2. Robin Hood meets Little John. One morning, when all the birds were singing among the leaves, Robin and all his men awoke. Each fellow washed his head and hands in a cold brown brook that leaped laughingly from stone to stone. Then Robin announced, Today I go to seek adventure. Wait here in the greenwood, my merry men. I shall blow three blasts upon my bugle horn if I need you. Then come quickly, for I shall want your aid. He walked to the edge of Sherwood and wandered for a long time through highway and byway. He met many people, a fair lady, a fat monk, a gallant knight, a plump lass, but he found no adventure. At last he came to a narrow bridge made of one log laid across a pebbly stream. There was room enough for only one person to cross. Then he saw a tall stranger coming from the other side. Each man walked faster, thinking to cross first. Now stand back, shouted Robin, and let the better man cross first. No, answered the stranger, stand back yourself, for I am the better man. Then Robin and the stranger began to boast to each other. Robin was tall, but the stranger was taller by a head, for he was seven feet tall. The man was also much broader than Robin. Even so, it was not long before Robin challenged him to a bout with staffs on the bridge. The first man to fall would tumble into the water. I'll gladly wait while you cut a stick to use as a staff, said the stranger, laughing and twirling his own staff till it whistled in the air above his head. The knights of King Arthur's round table never met in a fiercer fight than these two. Robin and the stranger stood face to face on the bridge for one good hour. Many blows were given and received, till here and there were bumps and sore bones on both. Each man marveled at the other's strength. Then the stranger gave Robin a crack on the head. Robin lost his temper and swung with all his might at the stranger. But the man caught him off balance, and Robin fell head over heels into the water. And where are you now, good lad? shouted the stranger, roaring with laughter. Oh, floating with the tide, said Robin, laughing at himself. He waded to the bank, frightening and scattering the little fish with his splashing. Then he clapped his horn to his lips and blew a blast that echoed sweetly down the forest paths. I must say you are a sturdy soul and a strong fighter, said Robin. And you, said the stranger, laughing, you take your beating bravely. Soon the twigs and branch branches rustled, and suddenly twenty or thirty of Robin's strong yeomen, all dressed in Lincoln green, burst from the forest with Will Stutley leading them. When they heard that this stranger had given their chief a good dunking, they moved to treat him to the same. But the stranger was so strong, he held them off, and more than one yeoman got a bruised head. Robin asked the stranger to join his band, and the man replied, If there is any man here who can shoot a better arrow than I, I might. The stranger chose the strongest bow next to Robin's own, and sent an arrow so straight that it hit the very center of the mark made on an oak tree eighty yards away. Even Robin's own men clapped enthusiastically at such a fine shot. Ah, cried the stranger, do better if you can. Robin took up his bow and shot with his very greatest skill. The arrow flew straight, and it split the stranger's arrow into splinters. The yeomen leaped to their feet, waved their caps, and cheered. That is a shot indeed, cried the stranger. Now I, I will be one of your men. I am called John Little. When Will, when will Stut, Stutley, who loved a good joke, spoke up, No, stranger, I do not like your name, so I will change it. You are so small and frail, I think I will call you Little John. With that, Will emptied a pot of ale over the stranger's head and christened him Little John, while Robin Hood and all his band laughed aloud. At first, Little John was angry, but he soon found he could not stay angry for long, because the others were so merry. So he laughed with the rest. Then Robin clothed him from top to toe in Lincoln Green and gave him a good yew bow. Little John was now a member of Robin Hood's merry band. End of chapter 2.